May, 24 female have a twin sister, Ashley, and we've always been close. She started dating this guy a year ago, Jared, 32 male. I never really liked him, but my sister was head over heels in love with him and said she wanted to marry him. This summer, I was at the grocery store when a woman with three kids approached me in the aisle and asked if I was Ashley. I said no and was about to say we're twins when she cut me off and said, Yes, you are. You're dating my deadbeat baby daddy and want to stalk my pages, leaving hate messages saying he chose you over us and to move on. How heartless are you? I was like, what the heck? I'm not Ashley. I'm her twin sister, Blair, and asked if she was talking about Jared. She said yes and showed me the screenshots of my sister DMing her, saying Jared is now hers. He doesn't claim those kids, blah, blah. I was very uncomfortable, but I knew in my gut he was a weirdo. I was so shocked my sister would date a deadbeat and proudly knowing how our father being a deadbeat sent us both to therapy. I just walked away. A few days later, I asked my sister and she denied it at first, then admitted it, saying she didn't tell me he has kids since I don't date men with kids and she didn't want me to judge her. I told her I was judging the fact that he's a deadbeat, not a father. We argued about it a lot and I've looked at her differently since. This week she invited me over and she and Jared told me she was pregnant and were both so happy. I just sat there silently and kept eating. She asked why I was acting like a witch and why I wasn't happy to be an aunt and I said it was because of my gestures toward Jared. He got angry and said, what's your problem with me? I said it was because you're a deadbeat. They both got quiet and he said, that doesn't mean I'll be one for this kid. At this point I laughed and got up to leave. I'm in the hallway on the way to the elevator when my sister comes running behind me and keeps asking why I'm being so rude while she's sobbing. I told her that she should be ashamed to be pregnant by a guy who abandoned his other kids, knowing that it happened to us and that she's disgusting and a loser. He's going to leave her like he did his ex. She said I didn't know the full story and she couldn't believe I would not be supportive at this time of her life and the baby has half my DNA too. I said she and Jared live with two other roommates and she pays the bill since he has to pay child support. Then she asked me if I could help plan the gender reveal and baby shower with her and pay for half since it's my niece or nephew and I said no but I felt bad and said I would try to be there for her but she'd realised what a mistake she made and then I left. Now she's texting me saying she wants to come back and make me apologise to Jared but I refused and she said she doesn't want to speak to me if I don't apologise to them. So am I the idiot for shaming my sister for being pregnant and refusing to help her at all with any expenses? Not the idiot. Some people have to learn hard lessons on their own. You did what you could, now she has to live with the consequences. I get that by being a twin it might be harder to stand by and watch. However, you gave her the proverbial kick in the butt. It's all on her now. I bet the deadbeat pays little to no child support and is lying to your sister. I think he ditches her too in a year. Do you think he's going to make it to birth? They have two roommates and he can't pay rent plus child support for his existing children. Who's paying for even maternity clothes at this rate? I love the whole, sure, I'm a deadbeat with my ex and my other kids, but I won't be with this one. As if, I wonder if he had to find a woman naive enough to believe that by shopping around for one that is almost a decade his junior. Later in life, the eight-year difference won't matter much, but there's a big maturity difference between age 24 and age 32. But what no one's even mentioning is how the sister treated the other woman on top of everything else. She's stalking the other woman, sending hate messages and telling her how he's her man now. What a completely crappy human being her sister is, knowing that she's screwing over innocent children, not that this guy isn't a deadbeat. And then she defends this parasite but has the nerve to ask her sister for money? The audacity is mind-boggling. Personally, I would have nothing to do with her. For heck's sake, her sister thinks OP owes this deadbeat loser an apology. My wife and I switch off cooking. Both of us cook twice a week and on the days neither of us cooks, it's a leftover night or takeout. We used to have the person who didn't cook do the dishes after the meals. I clean as I cook, so when it's my night, there are very few dishes for her to clean up. When she cooks, I swear she uses almost every single dish or pot for her meals. It's a disaster in the kitchen and it takes me a long time to clean the whole thing up. I've had conversations about this before and asked to clean as she goes to reduce the mess. She refuses and claims that it's just what happens because she likes to make elaborate meals. She makes more elaborate meals than I do and spends a while in the kitchen. I prefer to make simpler meals like stir fry. I brought up last Thursday that I won't clean up after her cooking anymore. She left a huge mess and I was over it. I told her that I would clean up my dinners and that she could clean up hers. 
On Saturday, my cooking night, I made beef tips over noodles and cleaned them all up. Sunday was her cooking night and she made homemade pasta and red pepper sauce. We ate and she didn't clean up her mess and later that night she asked me to clean it up. I told her no, reminded her what I told her and pointed out that I'd clean my stuff up. This brings me to this morning. I didn't do the dishes and when she woke up there wasn't much room for her to make her coffee and breakfast. She was angry I didn't clean it up. We got into a huge argument before I left for work. She thinks I'm a huge idiot. Not the idiot. It isn't that her meals are more elaborate. It's that she isn't cleaning anything as she goes, so it all piles up. The division of labor isn't anywhere near even. If she wants to clean less, she can use fewer dishes or clean as she goes. She's picking what meals she wants to cook, so she's picking how much mess to make. You are the idiot. You know she likes to cook. That's a great quality in a partner and one that yields delicious rewards for you. Her making a multi-hour Sunday dinner is not the same as you throwing together a 15-minute weeknight stir-fry. If you want the benefit of her superior level of cooking, you need to contribute to that end. If you'd rather eat basic one-pot meals your entire life, I'd say you married the wrong person. Don't make her resent you over doing something nice that you benefit from and can't do yourself. My husband has two daughters, a young teen and a tween, with his ex-wife. They've been divorced for almost 11 years and we've been married for 7 years and share two kids together, a toddler and a young grammar schooler. His ex-wife is not currently remarried, but she has married twice since the divorce and has two additional children, a kindergartner and a tween. The co-parenting relationship is very unstable and changeable. Some decisions need to be made via mediation, others they can agree on to a point, while a few were taken to court for a judge to decide for them. My relationship with my stepdaughters was good until three years ago when their mom's negativity changed how they treat me. They've expressed that they know their mom doesn't like me, so they won't like me anymore. This has been discussed in court and in therapy, and nothing has changed. They can continue to treat me differently than before. They don't get away with disrespect, but they're still way more than before, and they're generally colder with me. Now, on to the issue where I want to know if I'm the idiot. My husband and I are typically really good about communicating, and he's a supportive husband and father and has done a good job of keeping me out of his ex-wife's way so she can't say crap to me and also standing up for me. I don't join them for talks about the girls. That's him and his ex, but my husband and I will discuss it. A few months ago, the girls wanted to take new dance classes 50 minutes from our home. They already do ballet, dancing for fun, which is free, and gymnastics. But these dance classes are different. They're also more expensive than the other extracurricular activities they do. I told my husband I thought the new dance classes were too far and too expensive, and I said they wouldn't work with the schedule we already had. But when he and his ex sat down to discuss it, he agreed to these new dance classes, which he and his ex will split 50-50. When he told me, I wasn't thrilled because he didn't tell me he would agree to them. But I know it's not my decision. But I told him I could not and would not help get the girls there. He told me we'd figure something out. The girls were back with us two days after this talk and they said their mom told them I didn't want them to do these dance classes and it sucks to be me because I don't have a say because I'm not their parent. My husband told them not to speak to me like that. He wanted me to do it because he couldn't get his parents to take the girls to the new classes. I put my foot down and said no. He said he couldn't because he had to work. I told him I had to drop our older child at his extracurricular activity that day and it wouldn't work with time. My husband asked his ex if she'd bring them every week and she's saying I'm such an idiot for not driving them and how dare I think I get any say in this. I need to do what the kids want and stay out of their way otherwise. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You're not part of the plan so your help is unnecessary. You have your own children to worry about. Mom wants to continue to advocate for hate, then literally just do what duties need to be done when they are physically in your home. Feed them and make sure they have water and electricity. That's it. Dad also needs to buck the heck up and remind his ex that if she wants her kids to hate you, you're not doing the extra. He can fight with her about the kids, but not about respecting you. Almost sounds like you don't need him either. OP, you could try what my sister did. She just started saying, ask your dad for everything. Order pizza? Ask your dad. Go to the store? Ask your dad. Take them to choir? Ask your dad. Have friends over. Ask your dad. He's not home. Wait for him to get back or call him. Eventually, they just stopped asking her and left her out of it. 
Seriously, screw that crap. She doesn't get to treat you like crap, piss her children against you and then expect you to chauffeur her children around. She wants them to go to a dance class an hour away. She can get them there. You're not those brats' personal servant. They don't want you around. Don't be around for them. OP, your husband is pathetic. I raised my 24-year-old daughter on my own. I had my daughter when I was very young. I was 19. Her mom broke up with me and said she didn't want to be responsible for a child and I had her full custody. My ex gave up her rights to her daughter and left who knows where. It was really, really hard for me to raise her and take care of her. Thankfully, my sister and my mom helped me take care of her when I was working, but still, it was hard for me to take care of my daughter working and doing chores and other stuff all on my own. For her, I even sacrificed dating or marriage. I didn't want my daughter to have a stepmom or anything like that. My daughter's and her mom's relationship started flourishing two years ago. Her mom visited me and said she wanted to talk to her daughter. I didn't want to allow her, but I thought my daughter needed to know about her mom. They've gotten closer and hang out a lot. I didn't have a problem with that, but 10 months ago, my daughter said she wanted to go live with her mom, and I refused. I told her it was better she just stay with me and visit her mom every day if she wanted, but my daughter didn't listen to me. She said she was an adult and could do whatever she wanted. I tried explaining and told her repeatedly that my ex was not a good person, but my daughter didn't listen to me. After I left, I wasn't in contact with my daughter for all these months. I tried, but she would deny meeting me and always tell me she was busy or had other excuses, and we only talked to each other on the phone. But five days ago, my daughter visited me and she was crying. I was angry at her for ignoring me all this time, but I took her in. She hugged me right away, and after a while, she told me the truth. She told me that she was pregnant, and her mom kicked her out after she ran out of money I gave her. I was so shocked because I didn't even know my daughter had a boyfriend. But now my daughter is pregnant? I love my daughter very much, and even if she has betrayed me, I couldn't just deny her entry to my house. I let her in, and she's staying with me once again, but I do not talk to her. She told me she found out that she was pregnant a month ago, and after she told her mom, she was kicked out after a lot of taunting. Her ex-boyfriend doesn't want to take care of her child, so she needs my legal help. I told her I would help her with everything, but do not talk to me. I said I did everything for you and sacrificed everything for you, but you didn't even come back to your home or see your father once. I haven't been talking to my daughter ever since she came back. She, on the other hand, is depressed and suddenly turned back into a tween. She would randomly hug me and come to my side to cry, and I felt like she wanted her father's comfort, so I hugged her back. My daughter begs me to talk to her and says that she needs her father, but I think I should punish my daughter for just abandoning me. That's why I'm giving her the silent treatment, though I will help her with everything else. Am I wrong? Maybe your 24-year-old adult daughter needs to grow up and become an adult if she's going to be a parent. Quit the silent treatment and get her on her feet and able to care for herself. You're not doing her any favors by coddling her, yet ignoring her. Being a parent is about tough love sometimes, and parents' feelings get hurt all the time by their children. Be her parent. Quit entitling her. Yeah, talking about how he didn't want to allow his 22-year-old daughter to talk to her mother definitely makes him sound controlling. That's a full-grown adult who no longer requires parental permission to do something. It does seem she isn't treated as an adult, though, and I wonder if her dad has raised her up to be an independent adult or to still be dependent on him. Yep, I had to go back to be sure I hadn't misread the daughter's age. What got to me, as another form of abuse, is telling her he sacrificed everything for her. Look, I'm a single parent, and I know there are a lot of sacrifices, but I would never say that to my son. The joy he brings me far outweighs the sacrifices, and those are just part of being a parent anyway. I'll sometimes go to this popular bar on Saturday to have a few beers and watch the games. I'm there for maybe two hours. I got there at a good time and got a decent seat. As I was there, I noticed the bar getting packed more. There aren't any seats left. There was this large group sitting near me. I had three people on my left and two on my right, and people crowding around them, all the same group of people. Mind you, I'm not really socializing, I'm just watching the game. I'm actually quite introverted, so this was an awkward situation for me. LOL. As I order another beer, I start to hear things in the background like, He needs to go. I know they're talking about me. About five minutes later, this very pretty girl came up to me and asked how long I had left because she wanted to sit down. I told her politely that I wanted to catch the end of the game and then it was all hers. The game had maybe 15 minutes left. 
So I'm drinking my beer, minding my business, and this guy to my left from the group says, Hey, buddy, you're going to have to move. We need that chair. He didn't say please, didn't even ask, just told me I needed to leave. I was so angry. I told him I'd finish up my beer and leave. It was three quarters gone. The same guy puts his hand on me and says, I'm not trying to be an idiot, but you need to go. I politely tell him to get his hand off me. I finished my beer, waited on the check for another five minutes and left. An introvert's worst nightmare, ha ha. I feel like I wanted to stay longer just to be petty, but then I'd have to fight my way out. That's how tense it was. Isn't this ridiculous? Oh, you handled it very well. I would have sat there until closing out of spite and gotten intoxicated. Not the idiot. The entitlement and arrogance in others is disappointing, but not surprising. I love how they try to honeypot you first, though. That's hilarious, but so obvious. You are the idiot. The group had taken two seats to your one side and three to your other. Why not offer to trade seats with one of them on the end? I wouldn't want to sit between two friends who are shouting at each other through my head anyway. Negotiating the compromise for the other chair would have gotten the group off his back and you'd be able to enjoy the game.